Might have heard of Salt Bay, but over here it's Chip Bay. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be on the Robo Drill. We're gonna go over a quick modification that we're gonna to add to the machine. So we've been getting into the lights out production runs. We've been running overnight, stuff like that. I'm typically, the machine's alarming out at 10 hours, eight hours, six hours, and it's all because of pesky little chips on the laser eye. So we've printed up and mocked up just a very crude little air blast line system. We're gonna tie it into the system. We're gonna make sure that it's blasting air through the Ren Renishaw tool breakage detection macro. We're gonna make sure that it's clear in the chips. We're gonna do a little test, sprinkle some chips on there. Might've heard of Salt Bay, but over here it's Chip Bay and we're gonna see what happens. So we designed like everything in the shop, started the design in Fusion, drew it up, took it over to the Bambua printer, printed it real quick. We printed a few prototypes, right? Just that whole fit and feel, trying to figure out how I wanted to run the manifold, what I wanted to do. Quickly iterated, boom, came up with something that we kinda like. Now we're gonna test it before I take time to make it out of aluminum and machine it. The main reason why I'm doing this, right, is because I was tired of getting texts on my phone from Chatter at 10 p.m. saying, hey, the machine alarmed out. Stop calling me. Software, hardware fault, whatever the code is, I forget off the top of my head. But basically that's just the whole, there's a chip on this laser. So that laser goes from green to red and a chip is stuck there and it doesn't allow the tool breakage detection macro through Renishaw to run, right? The tool gets done roughing, there's chips all over the laser, it goes to do a quick little tool breakage check and it can't because that laser beam isn't open. Tractor beam is not functioning either. So to get this air blast hookup set up, we're gonna hop up here, we're gonna cut into an existing eight millimeter air line that is the air blast. So we'll be able to use the M100, M110 to turn that on and off via the Renishaw macro. So we're gonna hop up there, cut that, splice into that air, and run it down into the machine. So we've just got a simple little eight millimeter quick connect uh, T, airline T. I'm gonna cut this eight millimeter airline over here. That simple. We're gonna plug in the new line. I'm gonna use some yellow line just so that I know that it's the line that I modified just in case this all doesn't go according to plan. We're gonna then run this line into the machine cabinet through this line. This was a one of those barbed brass fittings. It was set up here for like an internal washdown hose that we're not using. So I just parted it off on the manual lathe. I reamed it real quick, opened up the bore so that it would accept this eight millimeter line. We're gonna run it down into the cabinet and then we'll show you how we're gonna attach it to the Renishaw laser base. So we've got that yellow eight millimeter air line starting to stub through that bulkhead area, like I said, that we had modified. We're gonna pull it in, we're gonna run it down the existing power cable and airline cable to the Renishaw laser. We're gonna just zip tie it just like they did. That way we know that it's not gonna bind or get hung up on the robot as it's loading and unloading pallets and tools. Ugh, I'm breached. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Robo drills are tiny, man. Okay, airline's in. So we've got the airline installed. We've got the clamp screwed up to the Renishaw laser base. We're gonna test it, make sure that it works, make sure that it, the airlines are aligned properly to kind of blast some of those chips off of the laser. Okay, so the initial concept, the initial test, it worked. You know, it blew off some of the chips that were there. It's really hard to replicate a real world situation because typically there's not a lot of chips there anyway. So we think that we have the airlines kind of dialed in close enough for now. So for you nerds out there that want to stick along and kind of see the whole air blast routine, why it was so easy and all I had to do was tie into an airline, it's because all of the background stuff is being, already being done for us. We're standing on the shoulders of giants, really. So this program right here is 9863. So this is the tool break plunge program. This is what will run 
every time I tell the machine to do a tool brake check after an operation. You see right here, the M98 is calling the sub, which is 9760. So then what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna hop over to 9760 and I'll explain why I didn't have to tie into another air relay and do some crazy out of the box thing. So we'll jump over into our systems. We're gonna scroll up to, what did I say again? 9760, 9760, the Renishaw settings. We're gonna open this. We're gonna check this out, check out the different things that are in this. I mean, there's a bunch going on, right? But if we come down right here, number 125, air blast, a zero would be off, a one is partial, which I believe just means that it does an initial blast at the beginning of that tool break detection cycle. And if I was to change this one to a two, it's gonna blow the entire time the tool is coming down to do the tool brake check. And that's, again, why we didn't have to tie into some crazy solenoid, come up with some crazy M code, anything like that, right? We're able to use all the automation that already comes packed into this machine. We're just simply, I'm being a caveman and I'm running some airlines and it's literally that simple. A few things that I could do to technically make this better. Currently, I don't see why I would ever use air blast up there at the spindle. So I could take that eight millimeter line off and I could plug it so that I increase the volume of air coming out of those two lines versus it coming out of three. But for now, we're gonna run it, we're gonna test it, and I'll let you guys know if it helps us in our nighttime runs and it helps prevent me from having to come in at 10 o'clock. As always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for following along. I'm happy to be here. See you guys.